are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are powerful, you are powerful.
God is there, you are glorious, so glorious in your name. Yeshua. prayer now as directed by the Lord because of the set of people that is highly interested in their case here and I want you to shout it Yahweh break these chains that's what I want you to say seven powerful times that's what is interested in you Father I thank you for this cloud of your presence here. I thank you because your presence is mighty on a day like this. And Father, every eternal chain, every internal chain, every internal chain, 
in the life of anyone here. Any chain restricting elevation. Any chain holding down their glory. Every chain fighting against your relevance. Every chain locking up any organ of your body. Any chain that has been growing old with you. Especially you, this rusty chain. As the children of God will call on Yahweh to break this chain seven more times. At the speed of light, I declare, let those chains break. Are you ready right now? Yahweh, what should Yahweh do? Break my chains. I want you to focus on those areas when you know that there is a chain. I want you to focus on your life right now. Don't let your mind wander. Are you ready for this prayer? Yahweh, break my chains. Open your mouth and say several Bible times. Ah. Father, this chain is not meant to be there. It is old and rust. Every chain that has kept this life, this level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let the power of God turn back against this chain in your life. That is it. In your life. Uh -huh. In your life. You have been fighting this battle right from the time you graduated. This warfare has been loud over your life by the reason of the anointing. We speak to the root of this chain. Enough is enough. By his name, Yahweh, the all powerful God. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Every chain that is like a wedding band between you and this spirit spouse. Oh, yeah. You are a chain. And we cannot be in chains with you. By the reason of the anointing, wherever that person is right now, let the power of God that can break chains visit your chain. Uh -huh. You are going to feel it. You are going to feel it. Every chain that has your name written on it, Every family dragon whose finger has the chains of every member of this family attached to it. The power of God break that chain. Look at it. It has to go. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. You can't remain there. You can't remain there. You can't stay there. Oh, yeah. Let the power of God separate you from this chain. 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 That is it. Aha. 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 Look at there's one tolani here. There is a weight placed on you. 
by someone who is dead in your family and you are still carrying this load and this chain is attached to this load and every time you move this load slows you down by the reason of the anointing let the power of God that can do exceeding abundantly let it locate that chain that chain that chain that chain where is the axe of fire locate this chain axe of fire locate this chain every internal chain holding you from becoming a high flyer let the axe of fire break it off look at it look at it look at it look at it father let this chain leave the hands of this person leave the hands leave the hands leave the hands let the axe of fire locate the wrist of this fellow and let that chain be removed, 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 be removed. This is representing slavery. I pray by the reason of the anointing of God upon this room right now. Every chain that has your name written on it, every chain that has this family dragon attaching everybody's chain to his fingers. Wherever you are, you are not living here with this chain. You are not living here. You are not living here. You are not living here. I want you. This is like I know we, we, you are not permitted to live here. This everybody is connected to the hand of this dragon. And once this chain is broken, my brother, my sister, your soul has escaped. I want you to shout it several times. Jesus, break my chains. I want you to say it. I can still see this dragon. No, it's not possible. We will not leave this prayer until this chain gets broken. Everybody must know that you are serving a living God. Your life must be a pointer that God answers prayer. Say it seven times, Jesus. Break my chains. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Have a word for that person. Before this time tomorrow, you will receive a call that will make you dance. Where they are forgotten you, there will be a urgent need for you to be remembered. Thank you, Father. May please be seated and pray this prayer on your health. You need it now more than ever before. I'm going to pray that by the power in the name of Jesus, infirmity will not reign in my body. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Say loud and clear. By the power in the name of Jesus. Infirmity will not reign in my mortal body. It will not reign in my body. Pray loud and clear. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Say power of God that kills infirmity come upon my body.
in the name of Jesus. Make sure you are praying that prayer. Say it loud and clear. Say it loud and clear. Say it loud and clear. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, as we go into your word, please let your word touch us. Let everybody here encounter your raw power. Every power that is angry at this person's breakthrough that is about to arrive. We command that power to receive a slap of fire. And anyone that is planning to stop your letter of promotion, let God stop them by fire. For everybody in this service, you will sing your song and dance your dance. And by the power in the name of Jesus, your story and your song will change. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. We are still looking at the condition of your star. If I'm right, this should be part four. And I'm speaking of what I call living your star. And I want you to please listen carefully. Living your star. Another word is that living your dreams. Living your visions. And I want you to please listen carefully. We have always been looking at the book of Matthew chapter 2. If I'm right. That talks about the star of Jesus. When they saw it and the wise men came. And... Today we are looking at another account that spoke about the star of Jesus. Another account. And this time around is from someone whose gospel is well detailed. And one of the reasons why his gospel according to Jesus is well detailed is because he happens to be a medical doctor. So he gave us a well-detailed account. So if you want to get the full gist of Jesus, some other things that happen, then you look at the book of Luke. And we shall be looking at the book of Luke, chapter 2. Luke, chapter 2. I'm going to be very fast. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife. Who was with child? So, when you are reading the story, don't say that they were taking him to hospital. That was why there was no money for hospital. But everywhere was full up. So, it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. And wrapped him in waddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them to stay. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Now when they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields. Separate from the account of the wise men. Keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. 
For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is Christ the Lord? And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will towards men. I pray for somebody here. Every joy that should follow your bath, that the enemy has stopped from this moment, that joy will replay itself. Maybe you don't know. God still speaks about children. And one good thing about it is that there is a mystery. Why was God revealing things to shepherds? Shepherds represent those who are taking care of God's flocks. Shepherd represent those who God has placed in charge of his fold. I pray for you as the shepherd of this house. Every good thing that God has written concerning your star that has not manifested in this 2020, one after the other, they will begin to manifest. So remember, the Bible calls some people wise men. These ones, the Bible says they were what? They were shepherds on their own. The angel, everyone was so happy that they were spreading the star of Jesus around. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which they were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered on them in her heart. I have spoken about these things several times before. And some of the things that has not allowed some of us to live our dreams. Some of the things that has not allowed some of us to live our star is the undue exposure that our life has faced. When a child was born and they took the child before someone who is potent, spiritually, diabolical, and when they took the child there, the man started his incantation and said, this child will be very, very great. He will have a lot of money. And what I can see before this child, this girl, is so many cars. But this girl will die in a car accident. And right there, the mother said, please enforce so that she doesn't buy any car. I'm not telling you a fake story. I'm telling you a true life story. We've seen people that their own undue exposure is the reason why their destiny is like this. But thank God for a woman of wisdom. The Bible says she kept it in her heart and she pondered on these things. And the Bible did not stop there. Then the shepherds returned and glorified and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were complete for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of our purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called only to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. And this man was just a devote waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. 
So he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simon blessed them and said to Mary's mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of what? Of many in Israel. And for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanel and the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband several years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years. Who did not depart from the temple but serve God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all these things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This man we are talking about is Jesus Christ. I want to ask you one simple question here. Did Jesus leave his star? Yes or no? Yes or no? I prophesy over your life. Anything that is saying you will not leave your star. Anything that is saying you will not fulfill everything written concerning your star. The power of God will arise today and destroy them forever in the name of Jesus. Beloved, it is another thing for God to speak. It's another thing for a man to fulfill his star. It's another thing, beloved, for you to realize that your star is under attack. And you have just been singing the song, my star is under attack. My star is fighting war. But, beloved, there is no more time you have to start leaving that star. There were so many people in the Bible, beloved, that did not leave their star. Some, their star was terminated from the womb. Some, beloved, in their mother's womb, they became blind by arrows. Some, in their mother's womb, the enemy fired arrows at them. And they began to have what we call different kind of sickness from the womb. Some, in their mother's womb, the enemy fired arrows. They said they have the hole in the heart. Some in their mother's womb, the enemy fired the arrow and they said the person was born lame. I pray for anyone here. Any arrow that entered your life from your mother's womb that has distorted the order of your star. Under this anointing, the power of God will arise and destroy it in the name of Jesus. The Bible calls some things, some people, it calls among with others. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 3, the king said, Call the stargazers among the others. In the book of Matthew 2, 1, I've told you before that the wise men knew about stars because they were not ordinary men. Beloved, there are people that can study the star of a man's life. And if they don't mean well for that person's star, the person will have difficulty in living that star. I've told you that some, beloved, started their star battle from the womb. Some, it was shortly after they came out from the womb that they started their star battle. Some, it was a little bit at a particular time around that age that they started their star battle. Some started it for primary school. Some started it at secondary school. Some started it at university days. Some started it when they graduated. Some started it when they got married. Some started it when they were in the marriage. And beloved, if you don't stop this battle, the enemy will begin to hard battle to your star. 
And if you look at it, beloved, there were so many people in the Bible. One good example for us in the Bible today was a man called Eli. Eli was a man that God had great plans for. God's plan for Eli was that by his star is that you will be the only, your family will always be priest forever in the land. But when the enemy will trouble the star of Eli, beloved, when they will trouble his star, they didn't start with him. Because I read my Bible, the only crime of Eli is that he did not have control over his children. And when the enemies dealt with him, beloved, they started with him by his children. And by the time his children dealt with his destiny, he got to a level that the man had what we call obesity. And perhaps it was as a result of the depressive mood his children put him. He got to a level that, beloved, that the star of Eli was winding down while God was raising another star around him. He got to a level, beloved, that the Lord himself placed a curse and said, because of your children, Eli, listen, you know, no, nobody in your family will get old. I pray for anyone here. Any power that wants your star to go down in your home, in your family, I command their operation to be crossed in the name of Jesus. So when you are thinking, well, my own is that I am fulfilling my star. I've told you today, somebody's children did not allow the man to fulfill his destiny. There's a man in the Bible called his name, beloved, is called King Saul. The Lord had a great plan for King Saul. The Lord told King Saul that, you see, you are a man that walked inside destiny. What brought forth the glory of Saul was that he was a man that knew how to sow seed. Because when they said they were looking for his father's, what's he called, heads of cattle, he said, I cannot go before a prophet without anything. And by the time he went before a prophet, he went for another thing, but his seed converted him to a king. And he became a king, but something in his life, something inside his body, something in the journey of his life was speaking against his star. Another regrettable word came out for him. What was the word that came out for this man? Do you know the word that came? He said, in the timetable of heaven, our plan is that you will, you and your family will rule forever. But because of this thing that you have done, no more shall anybody in your family rule again. A star closed down and another star was raised. I pray for you. Any power in your family that allows people to be replaced, any power in your foundation, that allow people to come down for somebody who did not sow anywhere to come and reap. I prophesy, if your amen can be resounding, let that yoke be destroyed over your life in the name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. There's a child in the Bible. Because of time, I'm not able to go to all the scriptures. If you go home, go and search for them. A small child in the Bible. When every time I read that scripture, I'm sure this child has destiny. I'm sure this child has glory. But there was something strange about the family that this child entered. I said, Pastor, who is that child in the Bible? There was a terrible spirit in that family that caused this child his destiny. If you read that story carefully, it was the story of the woman that slept. And slept in a way that she rolled over a child. And the child died. That child's destiny was destroyed by the mother. There are some of us here. The battle of your life is the battle of parents. This child was dead at a young age when she could not help herself and say, Mommy, you are choking me. This child died when you could not raise and say, Why are you, you are, this what kind of sleep can the mother sleep that she will use her body to roll over her child? And by the time she was caught, she wanted to exchange the child. I pray for anyone here. Any strange sleep your mother entered into, any strange occult your father entered into, your mother entered into that has suffocated your destiny from a young age. If your amen can be resounding, 
I declare, let those evil be reversed over your life in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a loud amen? Can I hear a glorious amen? Can I hear a powerful amen? Can I hear a thunderous amen? There was a man in the Bible. And that man is like so many of us. His name is Gideon. The Bible told us about Gideon. Gideon was a man that had fear. That had the inferiority, inferiority complex. He was a man that is, should be called a coward. And for once, God showed him his true identity. He became a man that led the children of God to war. A few number of people became those who brought victory to the land. What the Bible told us, by the time Gideon would die, he went back to the idol of his father's house. And the Bible says, because of this, his children will pay for it. There are so many people looking at me here that every time you go back to the idol of your father's house, you stop living your dream. Every time you have those terrible dreams of all those masquerades coming, it's a call. It's the snare of your father's house. They are trying to entrap you. They are telling you that you cannot live your dreams. Beloved, Remember where we started from. This man, Jesus Christ, lived his dream. All these prayers they were praying, they was at the beginning of his life. All these powerful prophecies that came, it was at the beginning of his life. But by the time you will go for that, beloved, everything that was said is for the rising and for the falling of people. Yes. His death will pierce through his mother's heart. Yes. He will save the whole of the world, the Gentiles. Yes, I pray again for you. Any power that says till they put ashes on you, you will not fulfill destiny. Let the power die! Let the power die! In the name of Jesus! Beloved, there are ways you can live your dream. And if you ask me, it's inside this scripture we read. There are divine ways a man can leave his star. After they said this thing about Jesus, the Bible told us in verse what? In verse 40. And the child grew and became strong. In what? In spirit. Number one. Number two is this. Filled with what? Wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. If you are not strong in spirit, beloved, the enemy will finish you. And listen to me. The Alsep that is like a broomstick, I have seen him converted a big man that when he calls men, they run. I've seen contests between the two of them. And this house converted this person to a beggar. I have seen a child that somebody gave birth to. It's not a joke. They brought the child here. Before I just relocated them to prayer city. You know what? Just, just go and relocate beside prayer city. Be there for deliverance for one year. Don't leave. The last time we anointed the child, they brought the child the following day. She woke up with blood on her head. And I asked you, what happened? He said, you know that anointing you gave me. By the time I got to the meeting, they beat me till I was. And the blood came physically. Yes. He converted a man that had three bedroom flats to become a man who was living in a completed beauty. And this witchcraft was given to the child by a housemate. If you are talking about you being strong in the spirit. Some of you don't know. You, only, you also want to be strong. When you have the phone number of the IG, you have the phone number of OP Mesa. You have the phone number of NBC director. Oh my God. All those things. When they say the name of IG, die, die. They will just be laughing at you. You think it is when you have physical influence that you have power. <laughs> that witch that does not know how to speak English can finish your life. That wizard that does not know anything. In, does not have any degree 
can make you prostrate. Are you here? The Bible says Jesus was strong in what? In spirit. What is the level of your spirit? Some of you, you are weaker than the weakest in spirit. All those harassing dreams, they pull my clothes, they slept with me. I ate, uh, what's it called? Uh, three cost me. As they brought the first one, I said, Next, they brought it. I asked for this thing, juice. They gave you cranberry juice. All those things. It's an indication that you are weak in spirit. All those dreams of you walking, they are pointing to you that your spirit man is weak. All those repeated prayers, repeated prayers, and you are not seeing the move of God, beloved, is an indication that your spirit man is weak. All those lack of praying for 20 minutes, Father, I thank you because you are God. I thank you. Father, don't let coronavirus eat me. Don't let it eat me. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Bless my children. Father, 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 you pick your food. Father, Father. Uh -huh. As I was saying, Lord, inside prayer is a position that your spirit man is weak. All those fasting that you want to do, and by the time it is just 3 p.m., your face has turned to the face of someone who wants to die. And you are looking like this. One day you just say, you don't know. You don't know what's doing me. Who is asking for what's doing you? Who is asking? I tell you, you don't know what's doing me. Don't, don't be your close to me. You know I'm fasting. It's, it's a point that you are weak. If you are a member of this church, I've told you before. If there are no days, at least, at least, you must fast twice a week. That is if you are lazy. And I'm not talking about three o'clock fast. So if you are like that here, yeah, you don't have any point. Or you don't fast, you cannot fast. When the Bible, you don't read. You are weak in the spirit. I will be talking to some people. I will quote scripture. They will say, eh, hey, is that in the Bible? Ha. So when, 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 which Bible are you now reading? I mean, you don't even know scriptures. You say, you don't, I don't have job. There are over 30 scriptures that talks about you not having job. Eh, hey, I am sick. There are over 60 scriptures that talks about you having good health. I am under witchcraft attack. Oh, there are over 40 deliverance scriptures that can give you victory over witchcraft attacks. The Bible says this boy, Jesus, the moment everybody prophesied about him and left him, the Bible told us he was strong in spirit. He was strong in spirit. One of the biggest prayers you can pray is that, Father, show me who I am in the spirit. The day God should show some of you, you can, you'll be surprised. You will see a lame person in spirit. Don't be surprised. You will see a toddler in spirit. The Bible told us clearly that woe to you when your king is a child, when your prince is a child, when your prince is a child. The Bible says woe to you. Meaning, if you want to live your dream, beloved, you must be strong in spirit. Because the Bible says, when the enemy comes like a rushing flood, he said it is the spirit of God that will raise a standard against them. Everything that is happening to you, beloved, started in the realm of the spirit. Write it, quote it, say it. Everything that is happening to you, beloved, it's all a function of the spirit realm. So when you are very weak in spirit. When your spirit man is weaker than anything. When spiritually they weigh you and they found you wanting. They will just be resuming by your window every night. But when the witch comes to your window and pecks at your glass. Ko, ko, ko. And as he's doing that ko, ko, ko. Is to send satanic imagery around your room. And cause terror. When your spirit man. You are the type that when you have a dream, in the dream you now dream. Inside that dream again, you now had a dream. It's to tell you that you are on a three-level slumber. Your spirit man is on compulsory errand. When they send those kind of network, you just feel that there's a strange presence around, but there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing that is going on around it. 
Still bad things happen to you, but you are not even previewed to see it. There is no form of spiritual intelligence. The Bible told us that they came to the man, and to the king, and said, there is a man that everything we are discussing, there's a mole. The man said, no, there is no mole. Said, it is that man they called Elisha. I know him. He's the one that is. And they said, go and arrest him. The moment they came around Elisha, Elisha did not call any physical presence. He did not call anybody on his phone. He did not begin to connect anyone. He said, don't worry. The people that are with me are more than those who are with them. When the strong in spirit will always receive challenge. Man, sorry, men will always receive challenge. They came to call Elijah down and say, oh, yeah, man of God, come down and let us put anchor in your hands and we will take you away. The Elijah did not joke with that kind of insult. Anyone who wants to bring you down from the mountain is a wicked enemy. Do you know what he said to them? He said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall. And right there, do you know what happened? They were burnt. I pray for somebody here. Whatever is making you weak in spirit, whatever is not making you to be strong in spirit, let the power of God crush it right now in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God crush it right now in the name of Jesus. It is not strong in body. It is strong in spirit. It is not strong in stature. It is strong in spirit. It is not in powerful car that you are driving. It is strong in spirit. It is not the level of military men you put in front of your door who don't sleep. It is those who are strong. There are powers that can enter your room without knocking the door. They will enter it and they will go. It is those who are what? Who are strong in spirit. If you are not strong in spirit, they will begin to make your dream run elter skelter. Because whatever they tell your dream to do, that is what your dream will begin to run. So whatever they tell your star, they will just be pushing your star up, up, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But the moment, beloved, I think I will stop on this point today because of the prayers we want to pray. We will continue next time. The moment you lay hold on your spirit man, that's what I was telling people. You will hear them call. There's a program called Touch of the Spirit for those that want to grow in spirit. They will not, they're not interested. There's the only one is there's a program called My Money Must Manifest. The whole place will be full. And this is the irony of it. The pastor will say, Receive your money. I receive it. Receive, I receive it. The moment they get home at night the power that is stronger than them will come and say, everything you receive, give it to me. And you will discover that, but I got the word. I felt the power of God. I even fell under the anointing. What really went wrong, beloved? It is just a divine mystery. And the child grew in what? In spirit. Became strong in spirit. I usually give you that small analogy. If there is no child, except one child that I've seen, that if you give the child coke, he will say water. And it's because they've trained the child like that. If I put a pet bottle of coke here, I've given you this analogy several times. And I call, let me just look for a three-year-old or a four-year-old. I say, come and open this pet bottle. What will happen? You will see the person what? Struggling. It will struggle. It will struggle. It will struggle. But when I throw it at somebody who is stronger, in what the child could not do, what will you do it? Easily. You will just open it. You know why? Because your strength equals that battle. Oftentimes, the breakthrough you are looking for will only respond to your spiritual strength. When you see people carrying calabash, People calling, using people's head. It's because they want a breakthrough that is commensurate with that kind of sacrifice. But we serve a God. We don't need to do all that. It's just that when you get to that level in the spirit realm, when you command a thousand to go and they go, when you command a thousand to come and they come, when you challenge authorities and everybody says, ah, please oh, be careful. That person 
is no more on your level. The last time we went there, I did not go back with my body. That is when they call strong in what? In spirit. That's when you say you are strong in spirit. I was, our daddy was ministering in the crusade. Before the crusade started, there were beds everywhere all over the distance. There were serious beds. I still have the video. The beds just came. They were crying. Immediately he climbed the altar. It's as if somebody obeyed the beds. They were crying and running away. That can only happen when a man is strong in spirit. You say you are fighting you in your office. Say you are fighting witches that are very powerful. Say you are fighting wizards. You are saying, Jesus, go and fight them for me. Oh. Jesus, go and fight them for me. Oh. Is it just your mate? One day, Jesus, so yeah, you too. Fight them back. But when you already want to say, receive fire, but it is a picture of your fornication that you are using to slap them. When you say, receive fire, is a picture of your malice and your anger and your uncontrollable desire that is slapping them. When you say, receive fire, and they are showing you that, look at you, look at you. The last time, haven't you heard the Lord telling you, stop eating, stop eating. Make sure you are fasting, make sure you are fasting. If you are here, you will eat breakfast before you remember that you are fasting. You need deliverance. Register. Nothing in you tells you. Say, ah, his power must change hands. Oh, and I, it, who could say you ate intentionally? But it, it's like that. You just remember that, oh, I have not eaten. Oh, I have eaten. It is a sign that you are not spiritually fit for it. Or you are the type that when you open prayer to pray, it's as if fear just comes over the room. And you quickly pack it and say, hmm, if they come this night now, it's not me. That they will catch. What am I looking for? You will just quickly go and sleep. And you will come to church. They said, Did you pray the prayer? I prayed it. You are deceiving yourself. It's a sign. That fear that came upon you is to let you know that you are weak in spirit. Close your eyes. I want you to please consider this word. You can leave your star. Jesus lived the star. Jesus fulfilled the star. But you could see the story there. The child grew strong in spirit. Is it the child that Herod wanted to kill that would be weak in spirit? Is it the child that everybody already knows about him that is weak in spirit? If you have been strong in spirit, beloved, you will not be at this level. I want you to pray to God and say, Father, Handle my weakness in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell him that you should handle your weakness this evening. Tell the almighty God to handle your weakness. Tell him, beloved. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. If you know you are in this meeting, everybody please rise up. When it's time for spiritual exercise, you find it terribly hard to do it. Find your way to the altar. When it's time for what? Any spiritual exercise. Prayer, fasting, memorizing the scripture. There's no scripture you know. John 3, 16, for God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will not like him, that is what you are quoting. Find your way. You don't have scriptures in your head. Fasting is hard for you to do. You cannot pray for one hour on your own. Please, don't deceive in yourself. One hour, you cannot pray, except they give you prayer points. If they say you pray on your own, you will pray, you will, you will have gone to Canada, you will go to Dubai, before you now remember that, I'm praying. You can't do personal vigil yourself. Find your way to the altar. That's why Jesus brought you here. So that you will leave your what? 
your star. The longest fast you can do is three o'clock fast. Once it's getting to six, there will be a warfare all over your body. Your heart will begin to move like this, as if it wants to jump out. And the moment you eat that food, your body will calm down. Beloved, they don't want you to grow in spirit. You know you are here. There's any weakness like any form of anger that is holding you down. Bitterness, resentfulness. You quickly find your way to the altar. And as we pray this prayer, I prophesy. For once in your spirit, power will change hands. I'm not feeling your amen. amen. I'm not feeling your amen. amen. Say garment of weakness. Whether you are at the altar or not, please pray so that you will not have to what? Pray. If you think you are strong, where your own uh, strength stops, that's where somebody will start. Am I making sense to someone? Where you think, uh, hey, I am strong, that is where somebody's zone has started. I want you to shout it. Say, garment of weakness, of weakness. over my spirit, over man. Cut fire! Say that again. Pray that prayer, beloved. Pray that prayer, beloved. Pray that prayer, beloved. Garment of weakness over my spirit, man. Cut fire! Aha. Can I have somebody help us? Aha. Pray that prayer, beloved. Pray that prayer, beloved. Aha. Pray that prayer, beloved. Pray that prayer, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Beloved, we are not praying. Remember where I started from. There are people that kill stars. That is what they what they do. Where I come from, they are specialized in what destroying. And I've told you. If you say yes, well, I love my star. My star is doing well. Pray so that you don't disturb your star. If you know you are not leaving your star yet, <laughs> please pray. Or if you know your star is always anchored on people, anchored on people, anchored on people, hey, how long will that happen? Let your star shine forth. If, but if you know you are here, you are not born again. I'm going to make two altar calls right now. Raise your hand. You know you are not born again. You have not given your life to Christ. Because we cannot really help you. Only God can help you. And the Bible says, except a man be born again. Except a man be born again. Except a man be born again. That kind of person cannot enjoy all these benefits. Just raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. God bless you. I can see that hand. God bless you. I can see that hand. God bless you, my sister. Can sit down. Just say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me and write my name in the book of life and make me reign eternally with you. Lord Jesus, please save me so that I will be saved. Lord Jesus, give me power to forsake Satan and all his works. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let your amen be powerful. Father, I pray for those who have given their life to you. The Lord, you will save them. The Lord, you will write their name in the book of life. And Lord, you will make them reign eternally with you. Father, please, don't let the devil harvest their souls. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The second altar call I want to know is, I want to call here is this. For those of you that gave your life to Christ, please, after the service, just come to the pastor stand here. We'd like to know you more and pray more with you. The second altar call, beloved, is for those who are here that you know that your weakness is the one puncturing the tire of your strength. Wherever you are, just put your right hand on your chest. You know there's a weakness in your life. It can be anything, beloved. 
Your own, it can be party, 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 party. It can be that kind of weakness. Your own, it can be lying. Your own, it can be what? Fornication. It can be adultery. It can be anything. Just put that right hand on your chest. God bless you. It can be anything, beloved. Don't be shy. Just put that hand there. Remember, the Bible says your righteousness is like filthy rags. And begin to talk to them and say, Father, please give me victory over this weakness. Tonight, tonight, tell him. It can be pornography, beloved. Your heart can be anything. Tell him to give you victory over it. Tell him to give you victory over it. Because of the prayers you want to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you ready now? I want you to pray this prayer. Everybody, wherever you are, please pray it. Say it with everything within you. Thank you, Father. I have a word for someone here. The Lord said this is the like the eleventh time. He's telling you, go and work for me. Go and work for me. But you are running. Just see the person that wants to become strong. You know yourself. Before you leave this service today, make sure you settle your case with God in this auditorium so that the foreign benefits that has been eluding you will stop running away from you. Everybody, please shout this prayer. I'm going to pray it very, very well. Say it again. Say, garment of weakness. Garment of weakness. Over my spirit, man. Cut fire. Pray that prayer, beloved. Pray that prayer, beloved. Garment of weakness over my spirit, man. Cut fire. Pray that prayer. Aha. Pray that prayer, beloved. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you are a black man, there's something called, especially by Nigeria, there's something we call power failure. If you get home now and there's no light, imagine if you try to put on your gen, God forbid, and the gen does not start. Do you know how chaotic your day will be? Everywhere will be in what? In darkness. That which will make life easy for you. Water. Nothing to pump it. Oh, you just want to do something. You have to go the primitive way to do everything. Beloved, that is the state of so many people here. Your spirit man is under what I call power failure. I want you to pray this prayer. Please, everybody pray it. Say it loud and clear. Say satanic strongholds. Satanic strongholds. Behind power failure in my life. Your time is up. Die, 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 die. Say it again. Aha. Say it again. Satanic strongholds 
behind power failure in my life. Aha. 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 Say it again. Pray that prayer, beloved. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to clap your hands as you sing this song. Very simple song. Holy Ghost and power. Fill my spirit. Fill my soul feel my life. That's what some of us here need. The day, power, change hands in your spirit, man. You yourself will know. Are you ready now? Are you ready right now? G, I want you to get ready just for Holy Ghost and power, feel my spirit, feel uh -huh. my soul, say, say. feel my life. Holy Ghost and power, feel my spirit, what the Lord said. There are some fires that will kickstart something. 
Unforgettable power of the Holy Ghost. Aha. Uh -huh. What is it? What is it? Something must give way. That is it. That is it. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Unforgettable power of the Holy Ghost. Unforgettable power of the Holy Ghost. Unforgettable fire of the Holy Ghost. Unforgettable fire of the Holy Ghost. Unforgettable fire of the Holy Ghost. That is it. Blah, 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 getting there now. I want to call on fire to leave your star. Power to for you to leave your star. I want you to get ready in your spirit right now. I want you to shout it. Follow me. Let the fire for you to leave your star. Aha, aha, aha. That is it. That is it. That is it. Uh -huh. Father, let the eagle of this person fly. Let the eagle of this life fly. Let the eagle of this life fly. 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 What is it? Uh -huh. Three more. Father, I pray. Rima kapoli kasutaria pakashentari boko sontoria. Reboko porinda ribo moko suprata likatalia da reboko sontoria. The great measure of fire that everybody here will need for their star to align itself. Aha, uh -huh. in accordance to the divine purpose. Let the fire fall. 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 Aha. Pray for this, your children at the altar. Whatever has tied your spirit man down, whatever has held you down from engaging in any meaningful spiritual activities, because you are in this service, I command that chain to be broken over your life. The Lord said, There's somebody here. There's a wizardry against your prayers. I pray because you are in this meeting. Let that wizardry end by fire. I pray. Everybody here, stretch forth your two hands. Every weakness in spirit. In your sleep tonight. Encounter the raw power of God. Encounter the raw power of God. Encounter it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Because everybody here will sing a new song. And I prophesy, your star will fulfill its purpose. Jesus lived to the expectation of his star. I professor, you will live to your own expectations. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing as we bring out our offering and our tithes for this meeting. Father, we thank you. Lord, as we pray over this offering and this tithe, let there be open heavens.